Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name's Katie, I'm a full-time artist, and in today's video I'm going to be comparing two different types of brush pen. I use them quite a lot in my work as a mixed media artist, and I'm constantly layering them, and the two main brands that I use are Tombow brush pens and Ecoline brush pens. They are slightly different, so I'm going to run through the differences and compare them in this video, so you can see exactly how they work and what makes them different from each other. I'm going to move on to a top-down desk view in a minute so you can see me swatch some of these out, show you how they blend and how juicy they are. And then I'm going to go on to a process video. So I'll be creating a landscape, one using the Tombow brush pens as the base and the other one using eco lines. So you can see how I use them in an actual piece of artwork. I know it can be really confusing with the amount of art supplies out there, so I do hope you find this helpful and let's get right into the video. Okay, so these are the colours that I'm going to be comparing. I've tried to pick similar shades just because I think that will be easier for you to see the difference. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the pens as they are. So the Tombow brush pens, these are ABT dual brush pens and they come in 107 shades. The Ecoline brush pens come in 60 shades, so a little bit less of a shade range with the Ecolines. In terms of the colours, they both do very bright shades, but I do find that Ecoline have a few less of the pastel and muted shades, which is what I prefer to use. So I'd say that my collection of Tombows, which are in this jug here, definitely are more than my Ecolines, which I just have this smaller set of, and a few spares. I tend to not use the brighter colours, and so Tombows are generally my go-to for my landscapes. But I do really like the Eco Lines for putting a huge amount of colour down, and I'll come onto that in a minute. I also just want to note that I don't store my Tombow brush pens like this. I usually have them with the brush end down, because I find that storing them this way does dry them out a little bit. But storing them upside down, I haven't had any problems. Now they are both water-based, so you can use them with water, and again I'll experiment that and show it in my sketchbook. The other thing to note is obviously I said these are dual brush pens, so this is one end of the Tombows and the other end is this level nib, so you can get a really fine line with this end and the Eco lines just have the one brush nib end, so that looks like that. You can see they're quite similar in terms of thickness, the Tombow one is slightly longer. And again I'll show you the difference with the quality of line I can get with both of those, but the Tombows have this one at the end, which personally I don't use, but if you are into fine liners, then it's definitely handy to have the option. The other main thing I want to point out about the differences in these pens is that the Tombows aren't refillable. So once they run out, they run out and they end up in landfill. Whereas something I really like about the Ecoline, which is a Royal Talents brand, is that you can refill them. So you just unscrew here, and the refill of the inks come like this. So I have a couple of these, these are the liquid watercolours. You can use them as they are, as an art supplier in their own right, but you also can use them to refill the brush pens. It comes with a dropper and then you just drip the watercolour straight into here and refill it that way. And that refills the pen and makes it nice and juicy again. So I really like that, it definitely means less in landfill. And the other thing that I found is that it does have a spare nib, so you can pull that out, especially when this one might get a little bit used and worn after a lot of use. You can swap that round, take that out and replace it with this one. So I really like that, I really like that you can replace the nib like that as well as refill it. The other thing that I want to mention is that you can also adjust the colours, because obviously you can refill it with your own shades. So, for example, where I mentioned these ones, which are really bright for me, so for example this yellow, I could then add in some other colours. So I've got an ochre colour in this style of ink, and I can add that into here. So I can adjust this and make this into a different shade, which I really like the idea of because generally I don't use these colours. So although I have the pens already, I can change it to be a shade that suits me more. So I'm going to be experimenting with that over the next few weeks, and if you do want to see a video with my adjusted brush pens, then do let me know. 
The last thing that I will compare with these brush pens is that they both come with a blender pen. This is the Tombow one and this is the Ecoline one. So again, I will see how these work together and I'm going to be doing the swatches and showing all of the experiments in a Royal Talons sketchbook. So this is the Royal Talons art creation sketchbook. This is the same brand as the Ecoline, but I find that they both work great in here and this is my go-to sketchbook for mixed media. It does have ivory coloured pages, so obviously that will affect the shades a little bit. But like I said, this is the one that I use all of the time and one that I highly recommend. So I'm just going to show you it in there. Okay, let's start off by swatching. So I'm going to swatch these, like I said, they are similar colours. So let's do the Tombows first. You can see the thickness of the line there on the thinner nib. And I do find that these are really nicely pigmented. I haven't had any issues with a colour coming out differently, though I would say they do require swatching first. Sometimes, and I think it's the same with all pens, when you swatch it, it looks different to the lid. I have seen people put little stickers on that they've made themselves and coloured in to correspond with the actual colour, because I do find that sometimes it doesn't match up. So for example, like a really light one would come out a lot darker. So I do think it's really handy to do a swatch first before you then go into your artwork. Then we've got a gray and a blue. I haven't ever had the nib disintegrate, but I have had them run out before. So I find that they run out of juice long before the nib goes bad. So those are the Tombows. Now I'm going to do the Eco line. I obviously can't get f as fine a line with this because I don't have the smaller nib. And again, these are really juicy. I do find that you have to swatch it first. So as you can see, although these look like quite similar shades, and more olivey, it comes out a lot more grass green, which is what it is called, but if you just grabbed it, I think you would think it was a slightly different shade. I haven't been able to match these perfectly, of course, but I do want to just show you the differences. So there are the pens swatched out, and one of the things that I do find as a noticeable difference is how juicy the eco lines feel compared to the Tombows. So I just want to do a smudge test down here at the bottom so we can see the difference. I'm just going to put down my colour first and then smudge it with my finger. So I do find that the Tombow is sinking quite quickly to the page. Let's do an eco line to compare. So in terms of smudging, it's very similar, but it feels a lot wetter on the eco lines than it does compared to the Tombow. But I do find it quite interesting that the smudge is very similar. I thought that I'd be able to smudge this one a lot more. Again, I think it does depend on the stock that you're using. If it didn't sink in quite as quickly, I think you have more chance of smudging with the eco line than you do with the Tombow. Now I want to do a blending test with my two blues. So let's pick the lightest and the darkest blue for the Tombow. And then I'll put the darker blue next to it. And I'm just going to blend with the colour here. So as with most brush pens in sketchbooks, especially off thin paper, it will start to peel the paper and come up with a bit of texture. But I don't mind that, I tend to just wipe it away and I don't have any issues. So there's the blending test with those. And I also want to do the same with the eco line. I do find that the nib of the eco lines are a lot. Um, like obviously they're juicier, but I also find that they're not as um, like sturdy. I find that they're a little bit more flexible. Now, obviously the um, shades there aren't exact, but I can see that it's blended a bit better with the eco lines. Again, we've got a bit of pilling, but you can see here how it dried really quickly with the Tombows, and I think 
the blending with the eco lines are, is a little bit better. Like I said, it is a different shade, but I definitely found that it felt a bit drier on the Tombows. Okay, so up here, let us test out their colourless blenders. And I'm just going to put on the pink. I'm going to see how it works without anything else there. So I find that works really well. I do have a video about using this blender, so I'll link that up in the corner for the Tombows. That gives a really nice softness out of there. And then the eco line. Slightly less pigmented than the Tombow one. Again, this one I would say pills a lot more, which is quite interesting. You can see the difference there. I haven't wiped anything away. Oh, I tried to, <laughs> I might have to do that again. I obviously have dirty fingers. Um, but I would say that the winner there was definitely the Tombow. Obviously I've smudged it now with the blue, but there's a lot of wetness there, whereas it's a lot drier with the Tombow. So again, the eco lines are a lot wetter, which is either a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what you want to use them for. Now the other thing I want to show is layering. So I'm going to put down a block of green with the Tombows. And I'll do the same with the eco lines. I'm just going to let those dry and then I'll come in with some mixed media over the top. So I'm going to test it with a dark colour, a white and then a pink. So these two are pencils. I've got the Derwent Drawing Chinese White and the Luminance Dark Indigo 639. And I'm going to test it with a Neo Colour Pastel. This is just the salmon colour. So there's the white on both. I do find this is a really good white pencil if you're looking for recommendations. And then a dark colour goes over no problem at all. This is generally how I use my brush pens. I use it for a base layer for both of them and then I'll go on top with my mixed media. And then the pink. So extremely similar. This is what it looks like on plain paper. So obviously the green is affecting the tone and obviously they are slightly different shades, but they work in the exact same way, especially once they're dried. There's no issues with layering there. I'm also just going to do a quick test of layering over the top with line works and using the brush pen. So I'm going to put down a gray and then straight away I'll come in with the blue. So it's feathering slightly. Let's do the same test with the eco lines. I'm going to leave it the same amount of time so we can see if there's more feathering. Definitely more feathering there on the eco lines. So you can see it's spread a lot more on that one because like I said, it was juicier when it went down. And then I do want to see the difference in nibs. So I'm going to try and do it really lightly and see how thin I can get each one. Let's use the yellows here. Now obviously I can use the nib, but I want this to be an even test and there isn't a smaller nib on the talons. So I'm just going to use the brush tip end And then I'm going to do it on its side. So what I usually use these for is for laying down big bits of colour. Let's do the same on the eco line. Can you see there like just how juicy it is? Put down a huge amount of wetness. And if I use the side again. So this is like almost too wet. I don't think that's it's supposed to do that. You can almost see here on the nib where the ink is coming out. Whereas I've never seen that happen with Tombows because they're just not as wet. So you can really see a difference there. And when I fill in colour, you can see some gradient there from the different like watercolour in here coming out slightly differently. Whereas I think the Tombows are a much more even colour. 
I had to do more strokes there to fill the space. But you can see that I do get more of a range of colour here on the eco lines. Even here when the ink came out too much, but also here on the swatch test. Whereas if you want really flat, even colours, then I think the Tombows are stronger in that respect. I do like the variation that the eco lines can give, but if you're doing like really bold graphic style, then the Tombows are going to be more of a flat colour. So there's our sketchbook spread of comparing the Tombows and the eco line. I think the biggest difference is the juiciness and the wetness and also the tone and getting a really flat colour. The eco lines definitely feather a bit, but in terms of layering on top, there's no issues with the mixed media. I'm going to move on to the process part of this video, so I think it will be interesting to see how the base layers vary. I'm going to be layering my mixed media on top as always, but I think it will be interesting to see if the flatness of the Tombows and maybe some of the tone variation from the wetness of the eco lines make a difference to the final result. I'll try and match the shades as best I can, but I'm going to be doing the same view and the same reference and we'll see the differences at the end. So I'm doing these landscape tests in my favourite sketchbook, which are the Royal Talons Art Creation Sketchbook. This is their 13 by 21 centimetre size, and I'm just putting down some panels. So as usual, I'm using my favourite Luminance pencils. These are Caran d'Ache, and I really like to draw out my panels first, and it just keeps things nice and neat, and I really like working within them, and it also worked well for this test. So we're starting with Tombows, I'm just picking out a few colours, and one of the things that I realised I didn't show you in the sketchbook tests with all of the swatching was how they work with water and blending them together. So I'll be using that for the sky here in these tests so you can see how they react and blend together. I'm putting down a few different colours here, so I am starting with the sky. I'm referencing a sunset scene and I will leave a link to the references that I've merged together because I did use two down below in the description box. I'm coming in with my water brush pen here just to soften up some of the edges, but I do have a video on my channel where I show three different ways to use the Tombow brush pens and water is included in that test as well, so I will Leave that linked as well if you want to see how it blends with water in a bit more detail. So I'm just layering up the various colours. Like I said, Tombow does have a lot more shade range than the Eco line, so I'm able to do that quite easily. I'm using a mix of pinks and yellows and oranges, and again, I'm just coming in with the water just to soften up those edges, and it does create a bit more of a softer yellow with that orange. Then I'm adding more colour to the sky, so I put down the lighter blue and then I'm coming in with this lilac. I really like adding little swatches to my pages, so I'm just adding in the ones I've already used here down the bottom. And then coming in with some greens just to start with the countryside landscape part of this view. And again, I have quite a lot of different greens. I'm using quite a few in this one. so. I'm using the really bright, vibrant one for the grassy field, and then there's this really olive one, another sort of grassy green, and in the distance there with the trees and hills, I'm using the darker greens. I do find that it layers really nicely. I'm coming in with my yellows and layering some other ones on top. I really like the way that they do layer, so that's not an issue with the Tombows, and you can also see how the texture is really apparent so I try and lean into that, I don't mind when one layer of the brush pen goes over the other and creates that really apparent brush pen effect. So now I'm moving on to the Ecoline brush pens and again, as with the other one, I'm starting with the sky. Now like I mentioned, the shade range is a lot less so I can't exactly match the colours. So I'm just doing my best and using what I have, coming in with the orange and the pink and here you can really see I'm picking up a lot more colour with the water brush pen. I'm using the exact same technique, but I do find that because the eco lines are a lot juicier, it responds a bit more to the water. You can definitely see that here with the red, but obviously it does mean that the paper's pulling a bit more, so it is making more of a rough texture, but I could definitely notice that it was picking up more pigment on the water brush pen than it did with the Tombows. Again, I'm adding in some more colour to the sky, but because I don't have softer colours or pastel shades, it's definitely coming out a lot more vibrant and brighter than the Tombows. And that is simply because 
I've got limited shades in my collection and so it's harder to do a muted scene. With the greens, again, I was limited with the colours I could use so I couldn't match this precisely and the greens are a bit more vibrant than I'd usually go for. But I did like the way that the pastel yellow picked up a little bit of the green above so that made a bit more of a difference there. And then I'm coming down the page and adding on more layers and layering the brush pen on top of the layers that are already there. It definitely creates much more feathering. You can really see when I am putting it on top how much the line spreads and you can definitely see that in the close-ups at the end as well where I've put that gold down and on top of the green you can see it's really feathered the line out. I did like the way that this darker grey layered on top of the green to create that really dark green that I didn't have a shade of, so that worked really well and something to note that you can layer the colours on top to create the shades that you do want. Now I'm not finished here, I'm just showing you the base layers, so before I come in with my mixed media, pencils and neocolour, I just wanted to show you how they look as they stand, just having used the brush pens at this point. So I'm starting with my pencils, again I'm using the Caran d'Ache Luminance which is what I use for the panel borders and just layering these out, this is the way that I like to work in most of my nature scenes and my landscapes and I'm just adding on extra textures and really building up the image a bit more. I really like creating movement in this way so I'm adding in more colour to the sky some scribble lines, some grass areas, and then of course the tiny details on like the house and then the sheep, which I think really help to bring this piece to life. It's kind of a slow process and you can add on as much as you want. I think it makes a big difference to the end result. And then I'm also coming in with my Neo colors, just the three today, so the salmon pink, the sky blue, and the lemon yellow. I add this on around the page just to add brighter pops of color I really like the way that the pink looks on the yellow and then this sky blue colour at the front just to show some flowers and I also really like highlighting lines as well. Then I'm moving on to the eco line one in the exact same way so using that to add on texture and highlight different areas. I really love the way that this defines more of the details and really neatens up the whole image. I'm trying to use the same colours that I did with the other one and again, it is the exact same way and I didn't have any issues with the layering for either of them. They work the exact same way. You can see here where the feathering is a bit more noticeable. And I again have put on a lot of texture with the grass and I'm going all in one way just to try and show that the movement is from like the wind and to make it seem a bit more natural. Again, I'm adding in my neocolor details. So I am trying to do this really precisely so that they both match. And the same with the salmon at the front as well. The last bit to add is obviously the details on the house. And now I'm just going to add on a label for each page so that you can see clearly which ones are the tombos and eco lines and it's handy for me to reference in the future as well. So we're going to end the video on an outro but hopefully these close-ups help you see the difference between the colours and also the blending especially with the feathering on the eco line version. So that sums up the differences and the comparison for these two types of brush pen. I really hope you found the video helpful and if you have any further questions or want to know something specific, please do let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you have a creative week and I will see you next Sunday with a new YouTube video. See you later!